In today's video documentary we will enter the fantastic world of hummingbirds. Not many people outside of the Americas have ever seen a hummingbird in the wild, unless they have visited the Americas. Myself, I've been very lucky to see a few different species in the wild, on my visits to different parts of Brazil. Hummingbirds are birds native to the Americas and comprise the biological family Trochilidae. With about 360 species, they occur from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, but the vast majority of the species are found in the tropics. They are small birds, with most species measuring 7.5 to 13 centimeters, 3 to 5 inch, in length. The smallest extant hummingbird species is the 5 centimeters, 2.0 inch, bee hummingbird, which weighs less than 2.0 grams, 0.07 ounces. The largest hummingbird species is the 23 centimeters, 9.1 inch, giant hummingbird, weighing 18 to 24 grams, 0.63 to 0.85 ounces. They are specialized for feeding on flower nectar, but all species also consume flying insects or spiders. Hummingbirds split from their sister group, the swifts and tree swifts, around 42 million years ago. The common ancestor of extant hummingbirds is estimated to have lived 22 million years ago in South America. They are known as hummingbirds because of the humming sound created by their beating wings, which flap at high frequencies audible to humans. They hover in mid-air at rapid wing flapping rates, which vary from around 12 beats per second in the largest species to around 80 per second in small hummingbirds. Of those species that have been measured during flying in wind tunnels, their top speeds exceed 15 meters per second, 54 kilometers per hour, 34 miles per hour. During courtship, some male species dive from 30 meters, 100 feet, of height above a female at speeds around 23 meters per second, 83 kilometers per hour, 51 miles per hour. Hummingbirds have the highest mass-specific metabolic rate of any homeothermic animal. To conserve energy when food is scarce and nightly when not foraging, they can go into torpor, a state similar to hibernation, and slow their metabolic rate to 1 15th its normal rate. Hummingbirds are restricted to the Americas from south-central Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, including the Caribbean. The majority of species occur in tropical and subtropical Central and South America, but several species also breed in temperate climates and some hill stars occur even in Alpine Andean highlands at altitudes up to 5,200 meters 17,100 feet. The greatest species richness is in humid tropical and subtropical forests of the northern Andes and adjacent foothills, but the number of species found in the Atlantic Forest, Central America or Southern Mexico also far exceeds the number found in Southern South America, the Caribbean Islands, the United States, and Canada. While fewer than 25 different species of hummingbirds have been recorded from the United States and fewer than 10 from Canada and Chile each, Colombia alone has more than 160 and the comparably small Ecuador has about 130 species. The migratory ruby-throated hummingbird breeds in a range from the southeastern United States to Ontario, while the black-chinned hummingbird, its close relative and another migrant, is the most widespread and common species in the southwestern United States. The rufous hummingbird is the most widespread species in western North America, and the only hummingbird to be recorded outside of the Americas, having occurred in the Chukchi Peninsula of Russia. Most North American hummingbirds migrate southward in fall to spend winter in Mexico, the Caribbean Islands, or Central America. A few southern South American species also move north to the tropics during the southern winter. A few species are year-round residents of Florida, California, and the far southwestern desert regions of the U.S. Among these are Anna's hummingbird, a common resident from southern Arizona and inland California, and the buff-bellied hummingbird, a winter resident from Florida across the Gulf Coast to South Texas. Ruby-throated hummingbirds are common along the Atlantic Flyway, and migrate in summer from as far north as Atlantic Canada, returning to Mexico, South America, southern Texas, and Florida to winter. During winter in southern Louisiana, 
black-chinned, buff-bellied, calliope, alans, anas, ruby-throated, rufous, broad-tailed, and broad-billed hummingbirds are present. The rufous hummingbird breeds farther north than any other species of hummingbird, often breeding in large numbers in temperate North America and wintering in increasing numbers along the coasts of the subtropical Gulf of Mexico and Florida, rather than in western or central Mexico. By migrating in spring as far north as the Yukon or southern Alaska, the rufous hummingbird migrates more extensively and nests farther north than any other hummingbird species, and must tolerate occasional temperatures below freezing in its breeding territory. This cold hardiness enables it to survive temperatures below freezing, provided that adequate shelter and food are available. As calculated by displacement of body size, the rufous hummingbird makes perhaps the longest migratory journey of any bird in the world. At just over 3 inch long, rufous birds travel 3,900 miles one way from Alaska to Mexico in late summer, a distance equal to 78,470,000 body lengths. By comparison, the 13-inch long Arctic Tern makes a one-way flight of about 11,185 miles, or 51,430,000 body lengths, just 65% of the body displacement during migration by rufous hummingbirds. The northward migration of rufous hummingbirds occurs along the Pacific Flyway and may be time-coordinated with flower and tree leaf emergence in spring in early March, and also with availability of insects as food. Arrival at breeding grounds before nectar availability from mature flowers may jeopardize breeding opportunities. Although hummingbird eyes are small in diameter, 5 to 6 millimeters, they are accommodated in the skull by reduced skull ossification, and occupy a relatively larger proportion of the skull compared to other birds and animals. Further, hummingbird eyes have relatively large corneas, which comprise about 50% of the total transverse eye diameter, combined with an extraordinary density of retinal ganglion cells responsible for visual processing, containing some 45,000 neurons per square millimeter. The enlarged cornea relative to total eye diameter serves to increase the amount of light perception by the eye when the pupil is dilated maximally, enabling nocturnal flight. During evolution, hummingbirds adapted to the navigational needs of visual processing while in rapid flight or hovering by development of the exceptionally dense array of retinal neurons, allowing for increased spatial resolution in the lateral and frontal visual fields. Morphological studies of the hummingbird brain showed that neuronal hypertrophy, relatively the largest in any bird, exists in a region called the pretectal nucleus lentiformis mesencephali, called the nucleus of the optic tract in mammals, responsible for refining dynamic visual processing while hovering and during rapid flight. The enlargement of the brain region responsible for visual processing indicates an enhanced ability for perception and processing of fast-moving visual stimuli which hummingbirds encounter during rapid forward flight, insect foraging, competitive interactions, and high-speed courtship. A study of broad-tailed hummingbirds indicated that hummingbirds have a fourth color-sensitive visual cone, humans have three, that detects ultraviolet light and enables discrimination of non-spectral colors, possibly having a role in courtship displays, territorial defense, and predator evasion. The fourth color cone would extend the range of visible colors for hummingbirds to perceive ultraviolet light and color combinations of feathers and gorgots, colorful plants, and other objects in their environment, enabling detection of as many as five non-spectral colors, including purple, ultraviolet red, ultraviolet green, ultraviolet yellow, and ultraviolet purple. Hummingbirds are highly sensitive to stimuli in their visual fields, responding to even minimal motion in any direction by reorienting themselves in mid-flight. Their visual sensitivity allows them to precisely hover in place while in complex and dynamic natural environments, functions enabled by the lentiform nucleus which is tuned to fast pattern velocities, enabling highly tuned control and collision avoidance during forward flight. Hummingbirds have exceptional visual acuity providing them with discrimination of food sources while foraging. 
Although hummingbirds are thought to be attracted to color while seeking food, such as red flowers or artificial feeders, experiments indicate that location and flower nectar quality are the most important beacons for foraging. Hummingbirds depend little on visual cues of flower color to beacon to nectar-rich locations, but rather they used surrounding landmarks to find the nectar reward. In at least one hummingbird species, the green-backed firecrown, Cephanoids cephaniodes, flower colors preferred are in the red-green wavelength for the bird's visual system, providing a higher contrast than for other flower colors. Further, the crown plumage of firecrown males is highly iridescent in the red wavelength range, peak at 650 nanometers, possibly providing a competitive advantage of dominance when foraging among other hummingbird species with less colorful plumage. The ability to discriminate colors of flowers and plumage is enabled by a visual system having four single cone cells and a double cone screened by photoreceptor oil droplets which enhance color discrimination. Hummingbirds are specialized nectarivores and are tied to the ornithophilus flowers upon which they feed. This co-evolution implies that morphological traits of hummingbirds, such as bill length, bill curvature, and body mass are correlated with morphological traits of plants, for example corolla length, curvature, and volume. Some species, especially those with unusual bill shapes, such as the sword-billed hummingbird and the sickle bills, are co-evolved with a small number of flower species. Even in the most specialized hummingbird plant mutualisms, though, the number of food plant lineages of the individual hummingbird species increases with time. The bee hummingbird, Melishuga heleni, the world's smallest bird, evolved to dwarfism likely because it had to compete with long-billed hummingbirds having an advantage for nectar foraging from specialized flowers, consequently leading the bee hummingbird to more successfully compete for flower foraging against insects. Many plants pollinated by hummingbirds produce flowers in shades of red, orange, and bright pink, though the birds take nectar from flowers of other colors, as well. Hummingbirds can see wavelengths into the near ultraviolet, but hummingbird pollinated flowers do not reflect these wavelengths as many insect pollinated flowers do. This narrow color spectrum may render hummingbird pollinated flowers relatively inconspicuous to most insects, thereby reducing nectar robbing. Hummingbird pollinated flowers also produce relatively weak nectar, averaging 25% sugars WW, containing a high proportion of sucrose, whereas insect pollinated flowers typically produce more concentrated nectars dominated by fructose and glucose. Hummingbirds and the plants they visit for nectar have a tight co-evolutionary association, generally called a plant-bird mutualistic network. These birds show high specialization and modularity, especially in communities with high species richness. These associations are also observed when closely related hummingbirds, for example two species of the same genus, visit distinct sets of flowering species. Hummingbirds have a good sense of smell and can detect many types of chemicals and pheromones. While hummingbirds rely primarily on vision and hearing to assess competition from bird and insect foragers near food sources, they may also be able to detect by smell the presence in nectar of insect defensive chemicals, such as formic acid, and aggregation pheromones of foraging ants, which discourage feeding. Another study showed that hummingbirds are attracted to the nectar aroma of certain flowers by the combination of volatile monoterpenes, including D-limonene, beta-mercene, and beta-nosamine. As this first part of the three-part series video documentary of the wonderful hummingbirds is coming to an end, let's watch some wonderful still photos of the fantastic and beautiful hummingbirds. I would also like to thank you all for watching and I hope that you found this first part of the Hummingbird video documentary inspiring, entertaining and interesting, and that you will come back to watch part 2 and part 3 too, when they are released. Until next time, I wish all of you, all the best and stay safe.